thanks very much for joining us this morning. Um, this is our fifth series of Vita Space Live, and this here we've joined with our partners Northern Wide Plank from Toronto in Canada um, to go over the story of time, the topic is this morning. And it's all about the history of reclaimed timber and how this, this company is turning old recycled barns into um, architectural masterpieces. So what we'll be going through is the history of the reclaimed program they've got, um, going through in detail the craftsmanship of how they're reproducing these products um, from derelict barns into what can be used in residential and commercial architecture. Um, going through what FSC reclaimed is, obviously a new concept that's not very commonly known. And then question answer time at the end. So we'll go through that with questions, but feel free, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. And no problems if you want to put any questions in during the session, we can answer these live and all we'll cover them off at the end. So we really appreciate that. This is the um, panelists I've got on this morning. I've got with me Aaron and Brad and some of the other Vita Space team are on as well. So really looking forward to what Sean Peebles, who's joined us from Toronto live this morning, Wednesday afternoon their time. So appreciate your time, Sean, and I'll pass it over to you. Thanks a lot. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Jimmy. And thanks for having me on here and good morning, New Zealand. Great to speak to everyone on the other side of the world. Um, hopefully my uh, screen works here. So as Jimmy already introduced me, I'll just add to it. I'm one of the founders here at Northern White Plank and have had a fair bit of hands-on experience with developing recycled products here that we export to all over the world. Um, so history reclaimed and old artifacts wood is really what this presentation is all about. So over the next uh, 15 minutes or so, we'll take you on our journey, beginning from what inspired us to come out with these products through to the recycled reclaimed process, uh, the product development. We'll touch on the sustainability aspect and the FSC recycled certification and show some of the finished projects that resulted in utilizing these materials. Demand for reclaiming previously used building materials has grown a lot over the years and more and more people see the value both uh, sustainability wise and inspiration wise to bring these elements into their projects. So I hope this presentation helps bring some insight into uh, what goes into them. So moving on just a, a little bit about us, Northern White Plank started in the early 2000s. We had about uh, 1700 acres of different woodlots, practicing selective logging, sustainable uh, forestry practices. We had our own little wood miser sawmill um, and kilns and a molder that we would mill uh, for local customers, their moldings and trims, solid flooring out of the wood that we would harvest um, out of the properties. So uh, prior to this uh, venture, my dad had been in building custom residential homes. So he knew a lot of the pain points that people were experiencing when looking for a high quality genuine product. The whole reclaimed program and recycled wood program that has now grown into a, a large part of our business is one that we kind of stumbled into. The next slide, you can kind of see it a little bit. But the brief story around it is my dad wanted to put new wood flooring into his house and wanted something out of the ordinary, not something that we could have made at that time. Um, and he came across this company at a home show that took down old barn structures and turned it into flooring and they would install it and sand and finish it, and fill all the holes on site, and you would have this gorgeous looking floor. Uh, so he went for it, ordered it, they did their work. And after about a month long process of the installation, you know, filling the hole, sanding it, stinking up the whole house with multiple coats of urethane, we had 1500 square feet of beautiful looking floor. Unbeknown to us, the material evidently came straight off the side of a barn. There was no kiln drying, so over the course of the next year, the, the floor sh uh, dried out and shrunk, creating more gapping, warping, twisting. Uh, the filler popped out of the holes, the finish flaked off. Uh, some boards had come loose and it squeaked in some places, so, you know, so on and so forth. So within a year, we really did have a floor that looked and acted like it was 100 years old. So at the end of the day, we would have friends over it and they would always say, wow, what a a cool looking floor and how did you get it? So to make a long story short, we thought that if we can make a product 
that had to look but the issues we had experienced that there would be a good market for it so that was kind of the, the start of the inspiration so we did uh, we did some market research there was other small companies out there that were doing this along the same lines as the company we had used essentially making a backwoods product um, out of their garage and uh, we spoke to some of the larger custom home builders and they said, you know, absolutely they would be interested. Two or three of them had actually had similar experiences as us and they would love to use a product like it, but not the headache that had gone along with it. So we set out on a venture to create that kind of a product. Uh, we didn't really know they would grow to the extent it has today. I guess it's probably 15 years later. Um, you can see in this slide, here we have a, a collection of these kind of boards that have person's initials and dates carved into them, you know, right back into the 1800s. We get old newspaper plastered onto them. Also, the, the wood is just different than what is out there today. There's a certain patina in the growth rings and everything about it is just different. You can have a piece of oak from new growth today and compare it to a piece of this reclaimed oak and it's just a different appearance a different patina so it's a really uh, fun interesting product to work with um, so just getting into the origins of where these products come from and our first step was really to try and source these types of reclaimed materials so we set out driving all over the country and trying to find old barns that we could take down we found demolition companies that would usually tear the barn down and burn them or truck them off to a landfill. Here in Canada and the U.S., a derelict old barn like that is a liability, so your insurance can be a good bit higher, and that is why landowners just want them gone. So today we, we source these materials from all over the eastern and uh, Midwest of the United States. And then in Canada here, we do uh, a fair bit of material from Ontario and Quebec. So as you can see from the next slide, the materials we get range from uh, one inch thick exterior and interior siding of the barns to the two inch thick roof and floor joists, different structural beams, uh, eight by eight, 10 by 10, 12 by 12, and long lengths. You know, some of them are hand hewn that have the old ads marks in them. Uh, some have hand saw marks or water mill blades. We get a, a variety of different wood species, but the, the main ones are the, are the Eastern Hemlock from Canada and the Red and White Oak from the US is the, is the bulk of the material. As you can imagine, we get a large variety of different colors such as the original weathered gray uh, shown here on the outside of this barn. On the next slide you'll see that uh, it's a different structure and the interior is a brown board. Um, there's not any weathering happening here so it generally stays more of a browny color. So it's it's really what the what um, elements it's being exposed to is really what brings out the color and the texture of what the product's going to be like. So keeping in mind that these, this material is anywhere from 75 to 150 years old, um, you get a lot of range. So it kind of uh, starts with the salvage process. Uh, that kind of kicks it all off. There's a great deal that goes into it to carefully dismantle the structure with minimal damage. I still think that we take it down faster than it would have been put up, but thankfully we have modern day technology now. Typically a crew of three people, it takes them about seven to 10 days to dismantle the structure, pack it all up and have it ready to load onto a truck. So there's a good, a good amount of physical labor that just goes into it. So kind of starting the process after that, when all of the material comes into the yard, comes in, we do a lot of more sorting and grading. Uh, we make a range of solid and engineered products, uh, some for flooring and a large amount for wall and ceiling cladding. Once the material is in our yard, we sort and grade it. Everything gets metal detected. Nails are pulled out by hand. Unfortunately, we don't have a mechanical or automated way to pull out those big spikes. Uh, not yet anyways. We also find bullets and buckshot, just a variety of materials you find in it. After that, the material is stickered for kiln drying and, and put into the kilns. This is a pretty, uh, pretty important 
step, as I, as I mentioned previously, your kiln drying needs to be proper. Depending on the wood species, it's in the kiln for anywhere from five to 14 days. And essentially the kiln is a, a large space that has heat and airflow and extracts the moisture in a controlled manner. At the same time, we're bringing the kiln up to a very high temperature to ensure high temperature, but also for an extended period of time to make sure we're killing any type of insects or living organisms. Um, this is a pretty important point for also the New Zealand market as your, your import laws are, are pretty strict in that country. They're, uh, they're really on top of their game there. You don't want anything coming in you don't want. After this, it, it heads over to the ripping and planing department where they thickness calibrate everything uh, to one consistent thickness and rip it to consistent widths so that it's easier for installation or further manufacturing. As you can imagine, 100 years ago, saw milling and the techni techniques they used were not really what they are today. So it's, you get a real um, range of thicknesses and widths that it is difficult to, to work with on site unless it's all brought to that, to that consistent width and thickness. On to the lamella cutting and, and preparation. If the material is going into one of our engineered products, it then heads over to the lamella or top layer work center where it's cut into quarter inch wear layers where we're using essentially a bandsaw to cut them in another machine to thickness calibrate them prior to the top layers being glued to the plywood. After that, we get into the gluing and engineering process where it uh, then gets bonded to a Baltic birch plywood substrate. The birch plywood is, is one of the most stable, high quality, readily available product on the market. Another interesting fact about this part is the glue that we use here to bond the two of them. It's a pressure sensitive hot melt glue that we worked uh, quite extensively with the manufacturer to develop it in a black color in order to help create a better, better visual appearance in the cracks and holes. You know, especially in a, in a wallboard product, they look a lot better in a black color coming through a black contrast in the back than a, a light colored uh, wood. After that, on to picking and filling this process. It, this is where we, a lot of labor intensive handwork goes into it where we're removing any loose particles in the knots and in the cracks and splits. Um, certain species are, wor are worse than others, but they all get cleaned out and everything gets filled with an epoxy filler. The epoxy filler is a, an interesting concept that we had to uh, develop in-house our, ourselves as well. So a lot of this stuff, there wasn't really any materials readily available at the time. And so we had to uh, make our own processes. On the milling and grading after that, this consists of final thickness calibration. This is where you get the tongue and groove uh, milled into the boards any final defecting, the end matching on the ends, it all happens at milling and grading. Final step is the finishing and packaging. At the finishing process, I could go on for, for hours here on the different techniques and processes that can influence the look. But at the end of the day here, we use a variety of stains and always finish with a hard wax oil to achieve the level of protection we're, we're striving for. So that pretty much covers the manufacturing aspect of it. Moving on to the sustainability part, I believe that unfortunately the small family farms in North America, they're, they're also now a part of history and everything seems to be getting turned into mega large scale farms. So many of these old barns and buildings across North America are starting to fall apart since they're, they're not being maintained, they're not being used. So these old structures start to become a problem for property owners because insurance goes up due to the hazard they represent. You know, you could have uh, small children or something go into the barn and get hurt, that kind of thing. So insurance companies definitely pay attention to them. Typically what has happened in the past and still continues today is a demolition company will be hired to get rid of the barn. And in, in most cases, the wood is destroyed because they truck it off to a landfill or they, they burn it on site to get rid of it as cheaply and quickly as possible. Nowadays though, thanks to the demand and, and value of this wood, people are much more conscious, uh, conscious of it. Um, just a few interesting facts around the sustainability. Uh, for the last few years, we've been processing here about, about an average of three structures per week 
and on average, you get about four to 5,000 square feet of raw siding material, plus all of the, uh, the structure and the beams. The product life cycle, so, you know, it's, it's important to us to utilize and extend this invaluable historical material as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons why we've developed our engineered products made with this wood. We're able to get two to three times more finished product out of a single barn than traditional solid products by utilizing the engineered format. You know, we recognize the value of both engineered and solid depending on the application it's going to be used for. So that's the reason why we, we do have both of them. Again, a feasibility study was, was done a few years ago. And that it's a common question that comes up, when will this reclaimed material run out? Or how much longer will you be able to get this type of material? So we were obviously concerned when we started this as well. And um, so they, there was one done that we, we would be, at the current rate that they're getting harvested, it's, we're probably good for a good 15 to 20 years. Um, an interesting point though, is as the current supply starts to become less, other building structure types, um, they'll provide a new source of reclaimed materials. So the looks and product might change over the years, but yeah, we feel that this resource is here for a while. So on to the FSC program. I'm not sure how large a thing this is in New Zealand or how familiar everyone is with this, uh, but FSC, it's the Forest Stewardship Council. The FSC system, it helps consumers and manufacturers alike to specify and procure timber, paper, and other forest products from well-managed forests, or in, in this case that we're speaking of, verified recycled sources. So it gives you the confidence that you're not contributing to a global forest destruction in order for anyone or any manufacturer to see, to use their label and sell their product as an FSC certified product, you have to be part of the program and you're subject to regular auditing of their inspectors. And you need to show your supply chain linking back, linking back to verified supply sources. The inspections are usually just a small amount of the work because there's a very large paper trail attached to it. And you have to keep track of every scrap of material that comes in and then is sold to show that you're not passing off non-verified material. As you'll notice in the, in the slide here, you can see the, the solid reclaimed product which maintains that's an FSC recycled classification while the second image you would see that it's an engineered product and so it's it gets a classification of a mixed product since approximately 30 percent is is a reclaimed material so these these recycled labels are something that everyone can look out for consumers manufacturers alike um, and provides assurance that all the wood in a product has been verified as a you know a genuine recycled so just onto the project showcase this project here that you're looking at was one that we did several years ago caught a lot of attention over here a lot of the history into this it was a very unique project uh, that's all of our rodeo product on there. The next screen is just a, an interior shot of the same place. The next screen is, um, as we go through here, is just a variety of interior treatments, different projects that you know we've been happy to supply product to. I think that pretty much wraps up my presentation. I'll hand this back over to you, Jimmy. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sean. That's some um, very interesting storyline there. Um, and just to clarify, some of those rec those later project images were from projects we've done in New Zealand with architects and interior designers across commercial and residential spaces. I guess one of the main things that we've seen the benefit of in New Zealand is the um, fact that there's a consistent supply and a relative consistent quality of colour. Um, you'll obviously get natural variation, but in the past, the only option of going down to the local recycling yard and trying to sort out some planks and get the machine up and made. Um, whereas this here enables the designer to select a, a product specify it and that can be used in the fit out, whether it's one location or, or multiple locations nationwide. And the other thing that's pretty good to clarify to the New Zealand customers as well is that the wall cladding products we do for the interior are an unfinished product. Um, these could be clear finished if required. And the other thing that can be done for commercial space is that they can be intramescent coated. As a standard unfinished, they met a group three rating. Um, but with a intramescent coating like Zone 92, um, Fire Shield or, or Zero Fire, they can meet a group 1S rating for commercial spaces. So if you do have any questions about that, just feel free to 
reach out to one of our team. And just quickly on our showroom, so we've got uh, flagship showrooms in Auckland and recently opened in Wellington. Now these are spaces that you can come in and explore these products. Obviously with the variation and the um, natural beauty of them, it's, it's really critical to be able to see these in large format display panels to see the true differences that you get in texture and color and also the, the way they're constructed. Um, so these are available to view and also for sampling, you can take these away and you can bring your clients and explore them. Any of the products we've got, we do have overnight shipping directly anywhere in the country for free sampling. So if you are interested in any of these recycled products, uh, just um, email us or ring us and we can get these shipped out to you overnight. If you are unable to visit any of the showrooms, there's our contact details there. So just checking in if there's any questions that have come in uh, from any of the team. Have you got any there, Aaron, that have come in at all? Thanks, Joey and Sean. We've had a couple that have come up. Firstly, Sean, you mentioned about the barns being between 75 and 150 years old. Is there a particular time that the, the siding tends to age in, or is that texture grow and grow over time? It, it, it kind of, it seems to hit a certain stage and then it stays the same. I think it's, it's a good question, but I, I believe that it's after about, we've noticed about 75 years, it just seems to be a fairly, in terms of the color, the color is very consistent. You may get a little more texturing as it gets older, but I would say that it, uh, it's relatively consistent. That's good, useful to know. I know you mentioned there was a, a big time difference, 75 to 150 years old. So that's good to know. And if you see a big part of the Vita Space story as well, is there a little bit more you can say on how that guides you? They, is it monitoring the volume of material you can process from a recycled source? Is that generally what that certification does for you? No, it's um, what it's doing is it's monitoring the... Um, in, in verifying the actual source. So I think with um, the level of incoming material that we have, we have to go out and audit our suppliers. Um, I, I believe we are a minimum of four suppliers per year. We have to go and do site inspections and we have to verify that that is, that is a proper recycled material. It's not material that somebody just purchased from the lumber yard and then is trying to flog it off onto us. So it's, we have to go and audit our suppliers. We also then have a audit ourselves from the actual FSC uh, corporation. They come and audit us and uh, make sure that we have everything in order on our end as well. That's awesome. Uh, we've just come up to time now. So there's just one more question come up and, um, I may need to answer it just from a New Zealand perspective. It's just in relation to using the products outside. So you obviously showed one of those farms there with the building, uh, that farmhouse, modern farmhouse project with the rodeo on the outside. Um, so the products we do market as interior New Zealand, that especially applies to the products that are engineered. So it's definitely an interior only product. The only situation you can use the product outside is if it's the solid, which is the rodeo and harken primarily, those two styles. And they would need to be used purely as a decorative or what's classified as a rain screen. So there'd need to be a waterproof proper cladding underneath them and it's purely a decorative finish. But if you do have any queries about that, um, we can definitely go into that in more detail and just look at the suitability of it and then what if there's any um, coating systems that would need to be applied just to look at the longevity of that finish, but it is purely a decorative finish, not a proper weatherproof cladding. So with that, appreciate you everyone coming on and um, Sean, really appreciate you joining and the storyline was very interesting and um, hugely valuable for the customers here. Um, very much look forward to our next webinar. We'll introduce that over the next few weeks to you and any feedback would really appreciate that and um, looking forward to seeing you in our showrooms in the near future and engaging with you on your next project. So thanks, Sean. Appreciate your time.